If you don't recognize them, don't worry. Good. Okay. Uh, so welcome to Showcase Night, uh, part one, 2014. Uh, I met most of you guys, uh, but as you know, I'm, I'm Robin, uh, one of the co-founders of Bluestem uh, Engineering. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, this night's a little bit smaller, uh, as we have a few more students going tomorrow, uh, but I think that'll give us more time to ask questions and give students more of an opportunity to explain exactly what they've been up to uh, for the past six weeks, which has been some pretty crazy stuff. So, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's wonderful to have all of you here. I know without uh, the parents' support uh, and those from different schools, uh, the students wouldn't actually be here. So I just know, please know that I'm appreciative of all your efforts uh, to encourage students, especially when things get frustrating with projects, which happen to everybody, I hope. And uh, your encouragement means the world to us outside of this program. Uh, I want to take uh, just a minute to explain the, uh, the history of Blue State Engineering, uh, where we are right now and where we're going. Uh, this is our fourth summer uh, overall. It's our second summer uh, in San Francisco. Uh, we started off in 2011, and uh, so my co-founder Dave Young, who some of you have met, but uh, most of you have not, uh, he and I uh, thought of this idea. We, and we really we came up with the idea of you know how do you make education more fun, but also make it incredibly challenging. That was the, the two things we were going for. So I hope that's what we've accomplished. Uh, seeing the frustrations and the challenges and the persistence. And the enjoyment of the students uh, convinces me on a daily basis that I think we're starting to reach that goal uh, within this program. Uh, I'll tell you guys a, a story of how we started and then uh, how we got to today. Uh, it just it blows my mind. I was talking to Dave yesterday, and we we're talking about all this, all the showcase nights we've been going on this year. Uh, our first program was in New York City, uh, and we spent about six months trying to build this program and conceive it, uh, getting the word out, so on and so forth. But it was so new, and uh, you know, no one really knew who we were. And so we spent about six months and netted one application in our first year. And so we took a hard look at, you know, do we actually want to do this? And so standing here four years later, uh, just reaffirms, you know, sometimes we don't get the results. The best answer is just to keep going. And that's what we did. So uh, from one application our first year, uh, that eventually actually turned into 10 students. We had a nice pilot program in New York City our first year in 2011. And now this year we actually had 115 students around the country. So about 11 times the size where we were before. So, uh, like I said, it, the foundation of that, those amazing students who build amazing projects and can speak about them intelligently, that's the foundation what keeps making this program bigger and better every single year. Okay. Uh, and with that, I just want to take a moment to introduce the staff. Uh, before I do that, I just want to say this has been a very unique year. We've had the biggest staff uh, in our history. and. Uh, because of all their hard work, their persistence, their organization, uh, they've allowed Dave and I to enjoy this program in a way that we never had before, without having to worry about every single last detail. A lot of times it was just done, and everything looks beautiful. And so that is not a credit to Dave or I, that's a credit solely to the staff. So I'm just going to take a minute to introduce them. They've done all the hard work. Uh, Dave and I really haven't done much this year, to be honest with you. So <laughs> we just get to give, give the intros now. Uh, so this is Will Bogue. Uh, he's from Cornell. He'll introduce himself. Yeah. So my name is Will Vogue. Uh, I've talked to a lot of you before uh, for the student conference calls, and I'm pretty sure um, I've, yes, I've seen most of you guys. Uh, so I'm from Cornell. I'm going into my junior year right now, and I'm an electrical engineering major. So uh, some things I do at Cornell, I work on a few project teams. Uh, one's making a 3D printer. One's making a, uh, a satellite. We're trying to make a satellite that uses gyroscopes to move around instead of uh, thrusters. And uh, one thing I've noticed there is that between all the the teams I work on over there and the teams and seeing all the students here, is you see a lot of the same enthusiasm. And if anything, I can see more enthusiasm and more like eagerness to work in the students here than I see even in my project teams. As in, like when I start to get down and work with something in my project team, I'll see that uh, you know people are like trying to see when they can leave. They're uh, not really too into it. Like they'll do the work that they need to do, but you don't see like the light in their eyes. And here, when I tell someone to work on something, you can see like. Uh, no, I tell Justin to, to add something, or I tell him, like, hey, you need to do this, you need to add something to your robot to make it balance. You can see that he really just gets down into it, and he's working, like, a really solid, good four hours, and you can see that he's really getting into it, and he's really doing what he needs to do, and he really wants to do what he needs to do. So that's really exciting. It's really exciting for me, like, particularly to see everyone, uh, to see everyone kind of do the projects that they want to do, and see them actually be really into it to the point where they're really working and really enjoying all the work that they're doing. What's been your biggest lesson learned as an instructor? As King uh, William? <laughs> biggest lesson learned. Let's see here. Uh, I've learned. I've learned a lot. So, personally, I've learned a lot taking this position. 
I've learned, uh, it's kind of, I look at it as kind of having like a bunch of different projects, uh, like a bunch of little micro projects and kind of managing all of them. So instead of like, um, like uh, at school I manage uh, the electrical team on the satellite team. So instead of working with one thing and having to manage, you know, maybe 30 people working on that, it's managing each person and all these individual projects. So it's kind of giving me like a lot of little mini microcosms of like large teams and seeing exactly how the design process should go. So one of the, the biggest lessons I've learned is that you should keep moving forward even if there's really nowhere that it seems like you could be going. So if you don't have your parts or if something's broken or if you're stuck, then you should find at least something to do to get keep moving forward. And it's the, it's the students who we did that for that really finished everything fast and really had the time to do exactly what they wanted to do. And it's the students who really had kind of the most, uh, the most enjoyable time here, I think. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, Ruben Copley. Uh, from Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh. Hi, I'm Ruben. Uh, I go to Carnegie Mellon. Uh, I'm going to be a junior next year as studying mechanical engineering. So I actually had a chance to meet a couple of you. If uh, I didn't actually meet all of you, but I'll be happy to talk to some of you at the end of the program. Um, so I'm actually working on an experimental 3D printer next semester that will be printing both uh, plastic as well as a conductive material. So you'll be able to make like circuit boards in one step just adding the components. Um, I'm also working on a aerodynamics on our Formula SA18. So it's been really cool to come to Blue Stamp all the way from Pittsburgh and see all of these students uh, working on their projects and really persevering through a lot of the problems they've had. And I think that's like the thing that struck out most to me. Like people would run into all these problems and it seemed like such a big setback, but they just I don't know bulldoze their way through it find another solution, find another way to get through it. And I think that's, that's really admirable. Yeah, thank you. And uh, last but not least, Ankita Rajput from NYU Poly. Hi, I guess I met everybody but, uh, except a few. Uh, so I'm Ankita. I'm doing a graduation from NYU in computer engineering. Uh, it's not computer science, it's computer engineering that involves hardware as well. So it's mainly the chip designing, the chip manufacturing, and also working on uh, very small scale integrated circuits. So uh, yeah, that's what where I worked. Uh, I mean, that's what I was working on. Uh, mainly the coding part. So I was here to help most of the students with the coding. And that's where we actually people face problems with. But it's surprising to see the way, the how patiently they handled everything. Because I, uh, it's been a long time I have been into high school, so there was a very big difference for me to get back to that age. And I was never that patient. I used to lose patience very soon. I, if I, if something is not working, I was like, I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. But these guys, they, they kept on working till they made it work. Tommy, for example, he had all problems with his hardware and software, but he finally made his project work, somehow. Uh, Margaret faced a problem two days back when everything was working, but it just broke off. So she was almost in tears and she was like, it's, it's, all these projects are like their pets right now. They, they have considered their, them as their pets. So she was into tears and she was like, what do I do now? Because it's just two days of, for the showcase night and I can't do anything. But still she worked and she made it work again. So, yeah, I guess these kids have caught, taught me how to be really patient, so it was a nice experience. I'm going to miss this. <laughs> so, thank you. I, I made a mistake, and last but not least, not true, uh, Nathan Siegel's here as well. Uh, I sometimes I forget Nathan, uh, not because I don't like him. Um, so Nathan was a student with us last year uh, from the Bay School, so he's going to be entering his senior year now in high school. Uh, but he was such a good student last year that we said, you know, instead of you being a student again, why don't you just come back and work for us? So he was the first ever junior TA at uh, Blue Stamp Engineering based solely on his incredible work that he did last year. What about Rain and NYC? So they started a week after you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, and also we need a confidence, so just take, just take that one. It won't be so easy to come back. Yeah, so like, uh, like Robin said, I, I heard about the program like two years ago, and I thought that that sounded fun, so I went. Uh, I went over. I went and uh, sort of did the program last year, and I, it was just so much fun. I got to build my project. And it worked. Uh, what was your project? 
project was uh, uh, like a, uh, it's like this tank that can navigate using GPS uh, and also avoid small obstacles as well. Uh, and uh, any great lessons learned this year? And uh, so, so I haven't actually. This is my first job that I've actually had. Uh, <laughs> So my entire sort of experience this year was new. Um, I I had a great time. It was it was really fun to learn about uh, learn about everyone's project instead instead of just like focusing on the one project to sort of see just the diversity of the ideas that different people had, like their, everything from bike generators to robotic tanks that would drive. Someone had the idea for a tank that was not only remote control, but control on, controlled by Wi-Fi um, and the internet. And I just, I like to see the, just the breadth of the projects that I didn't really get to see last year. And getting to help everybody out when I need, needed help was also a great experience too. Um, thank you. Okay. Uh, so, as a note, uh, for any students who are in the audience right now, we have a project to show. Uh, there's a junior TA position again open next year, maybe two. Um, it's great to make projects. You come back for second year as a student, you can make an even better project. Uh, but maybe you want to get a job and get paid. So think about that. If that's of interest to any of you, uh, let me know. And uh, make sure to be awesome, because that helps. Okay. So now it's well shot or run. Yeah, OK. So uh, what we're going to do today uh, is we're going to basically have each student come up. Each student's going to come up, they're going to show their starter project. That was the, uh, kind of the smaller project where everything was kind of pre-built for them. Uh, they'll come up here, they'll explain that briefly, show it to you guys, and then they're going to go through their main project. So they're going to uh, explain the process of their main project, explain what went into it, kind of give a little description of exactly what happened, and then uh, demo it, and hopefully you can see all their cool projects work right now. So uh, first we have Steven. So uh, Steven will come up. Uh, my name is Steven. Uh, next year I'll be a sophomore at the Urban School. Uh, and my starter project uh, was a Minty Boost, which is a smartphone charger powered by uh, two AA batteries. Uh, and so uh, the power from the two AA batteries went through the boost converter, which converted it so it would be able to go through a, uh, a charger. Uh, so I just simply charged my phone in and it's able to charge uh, like that. And then I kind of used a similar idea uh, that I had in my starter project on uh, my next project, which was a smartphone charger powered by heat. So I took a natural element and I kind of like, I turned that into how do I make this industrial and how do I, like what real world applications could it have? Um, and how it works, I have two thermoelectric generators which uh, capture the heat based on the difference between the hot side and the cold side. Uh, and that, both of those are connected in a series which get the maximum uh, voltage out of them. Uh, and I have both of those submerged in about an inch of water. So it can, so the water will keep the heat sink that both of them are attached to, it'll keep that cold. Uh, and that will make the cold side of the, the TEG, uh, the thermoelectric generator, and that will keep that side cold and uh, the heat gun will expose the hot side towards the heat, so the difference uh, will be uh, greater. And then I have that connected to a step-down regulator, which takes whatever current, or it takes whatever voltage the TEGs generate, and it steps it down to five, uh, just, just about five volts, uh, so I can go through a USB, uh, and I'll be able to charge the phone. Uh, so I can do a little demo. Uh, So the heat gun is powering, uh, it is giving heat to the hot side, uh, but the water is uh, cooling down the cold side through the aluminum heat sink. Uh, and it's going down to five volts here and then going through, the, going through the charger. So the only problem is it does take a little bit of time for it to heat up.
He's heated. Uh, while it's working, uh, can you tell us how much power they have to operate? Uh, both the TEGs uh, testing it with colder water. Uh, they were able to output around 12 volts of electricity uh, at a, I think at a current of around uh, one amp. Uh, so those together were able to do that. And oh, here we go, charging. So. So what really struck me about this project uh, specifically was the real world application that it could be applied to. Uh, it's because you don't always have a socket to charge your phone, but most of the time you do have some kind of heat source in a certain extent. Uh, but I think one of my greatest challenges was kind of like, you can only see 10 feet ahead of you, so you'd go that 10 feet and then if you bumped into a wall you'd have to turn back around. Uh, and just kind of that navigation of testing, and then if that works, testing, if it doesn't work, you go back, and uh, always have something to fall back onto. So, I mean, I had this whole idea in the beginning of like, I want it to look like this, I want it to operate like this, uh, this is what I want all the colored wires to be. And I think like having that idea in the beginning was good and bad at the same time, uh, just because I had a goal to, had a goal. Uh, also, when I didn't achieve that goal, uh, sometimes you're kind of like, is this actually worth it? Uh, and I think like, I had like the certain image of it, I kind of always like, I want it to look like this, this is how I want it to work, uh, and just having that. Uh, I think like overall this project like really taught me how to use your sources and how to also like, like believe in yourself to like, kind of just like take steps in the right direction. Uh, yeah, and I think overall, just blue stamp as a whole coming into this, I didn't know I didn't know anything, and I'll be completely honest, like I was kind of nervous, but I'd say that coming out, I was, I think I feel like I'm a lot more prepared, and I feel like just having the confidence under my belt that I know that I'm able to overcome these fears is. Uh,